Seymour Posner, an active 53 years now, practicing criminal defense lawyer in Detroit. Yeah. Thank you, Kurt. Um, he neglected to mention my other grandson, also was in that West Lounge, and that was uh, Alan Posner, who's named after him, my son. Uh, for you, those of you in the audience that are not familiar with Jewish humor, um, and there must be three or four anyway, <laughs> it is in the minor key like the music. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to get it that, that mood. And the, the story I tell is about two brothers who were in business together for 35 or 40 years. And one comes in one day and he says, Boris, I'm going to take a trip with my wife to Europe for three weeks. You watch the business. He says, of course, you know, I'm your brother, I'll watch him. He says, but you'll do me one favor. He says, one stand. I have a cat. He says, yeah, I know you got a cat. He says, you don't understand. This is a, we love this cat. He says, yeah, I understand. You love. I mean, we really love this cat. Can I trust you should look after the cat? He says, I'm your brother. Of course I'll look after your cat. I'll treat it like a real family. OK, so he brings over the cat and all this stuff. Three days later, he's in London, he gets a call from Sam, his brother. Boris, what's up? The cat is dead. <laughs> oh my God! Is that the way you tell a man who loves his cat that his cat is gone? He says, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I didn't, I, I, what should I do? He says, you don't do it like that. You do it the right way. The right way is you call me up and you say, the cat got out, it's on the roof, if you can't get it down, I call the fire department. And we're doing everything you want possible. That's what you do. The next day, you call me up. You say the fire department came out. We got him down, took him to the vet. They called a specialist in Boston. <laughs> He's flying in as we speak. We're doing everything humanly possible. Yeah, and then what? The next day, you call me back. They had a consultation. Man from Los Angeles came in, <laughs> and they did everything, everything. But we lost the cat. That's how you tell a man who loves his cat that his cat is on the roof where he can't get him down. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I didn't know. He says, two, three, four days goes by. He's in Rome. The phone rings. Sam, yeah. Boris, mom is on the roof and you can't get him out. <laughs> that is synonymous of how you tell somebody that they're going to die. And <laughs> Sadie's on the roof and you can't get her down. Uh, I'll tell you a quick one. This is uh, this one I like very much. Sam goes to see the rabbi. He says, uh, Rabbi, I have something to talk about. Sam, what is it? Or anything? You know, I'm your rabbi. I'm here. That's what I pay for. That's what you pay me for. He says, you don't understand. He says, uh, it's terrible. Says, What's terrible? He says, uh, you know my wife, Sadie? He says, yeah, I married you 28 years ago. I know Sadie. See you in show all the time. He says, I think she's trying to poison me. Is he crazy? Sadie, poison you? That's crazy. What do you want I should do? He says, talk to her. Find out what's going on in her head. See what's, you know, who knows? It's all right, I'll do it. Week goes by, goes back to see the rabbis in the study. He sits down, he says, well, rabbi, did you talk to Sadie? He says, yeah, yeah, she came in. I called him, she came into the office, said, right in that chair where you are. For an hour and 20 minutes, we talked. Then we talked. So, Rabbi, what's your advice? He says, take the poison. 